I seem to be the victim of a cruel jest. It dogs my footsteps with the girl I love the best. Greetings from Castle Goring, from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. Aurora is feeling particularly affectionate because we went to the north of England. We were in Yarm, which is a very beautiful town in the north of England. And then we were in Derbyshire at Buxton. And I am going to post a photograph of the girls in, we stayed in the most wonderful old hotel called the Old Hall in Buxton, where Mary, Queen of Scots, used to take the waters when she was Queen Elizabeth I's guest. Oh closely watched. She was effectively a prisoner of the state, but being a queen, she was allowed to take the waters at Buxton, and I saw the bedroom that she was in. We were actually in a nicer bedroom, <laughs> believe it or not, and I took a picture of the girls, Mickey underneath the bed, a four poster, Aurora on the bed and when I stay in hotels I make them give me blankets and I cover the bed with the blankets otherwise the girls might ruin the bed linen so anyway Elsie Tarner says Loved your show last night at Buxton Opera House. Fabulous evening. Well, I have to tell you, I loved the whole occasion. I loved Buxton. I loved the people. It's a very pretty spa town. It's in Derbyshire. I actually drove to Yarm, which is practically on the Scottish border. Just the girls and I, and then I drove from Yarm to Buxton, which is about two and a half hours through beautiful countryside because the Derbyshire Dales are absolutely magnificent. Rather more welcoming than the Yorkshire Moors, which quite chilling actually. You can see why Heathcliff kept on calling out for Kathy and you can also see why terrible things have happened on the moors which we won't go into but anybody who's British will know what I'm alluding to. So I'm going to ask Sean to post a photograph of the girls and me in front of the hotel with the plaque that says Mary Queen of Scots stayed here etc and then to post another one of the girls in the bedroom. I loved the hotel. Everybody was so nice. The hotel was so charming and just heaven on earth. So, thank you everybody who came and thank you everybody who gave me such a nice welcome. Now, Denise Fallin says, I am a mental health nurse practitioner in the US. You spoke eloquently and empathetically about Mr. Kingston. I tell people all the time that in those dark moments you aren't thinking clearly. Depression is real and it lies to people to the point you literally see no hope 
or future. My heart breaks for the family and for Mr. Kingston. Thank you for speaking on this subject. If anyone out there feels so inclined, I'm not using the word that she uses because this is YouTube. Please, please reach out for help. There are many of us around the world who want to help. Well, I am an ambassador for silence for S, the S word, which we're not going to mention because I don't want to fall foul of any YouTube regulations. But I think we know what we're speaking about. You know, Feeling low isn't the same thing as being depressed. When many of us say we're feeling depressed, we're feeling down, we're feeling unhappy, but true depression is not the same. The, the lights go out, everything goes black. It's like the system short circuits. And I have been speaking to people and there are some interesting theories uh, that are developing, which I'm going to share with you because I think they will ultimately help not only people to understand what might have happened, but also for the family to understand that people have an open mind and that people appreciate the tremendous difficulties that the family will be facing. Tom Kingston was a very respected hostage negotiator who witnessed a terrible, terrible, terrible self-immolating bombing. This is YouTube, the S word comes up again. That many people lost their lives right in front of him. And he was obviously affected by this. And there is a school of thought that the recent events in Gaza reactivated some of this trauma for him because with us it's a third-hand thing, with him it was a first-hand thing and you know he was a very good friend of Catherine Wales' sister, Pippa. And, of course, Prince William has also called for peace on humanitarian grounds. So, I think, I don't want to belabor the point, but I think when somebody has overcome a great trauma, it's sometimes a small thing or sometimes what you and I might think is a small thing or sometimes a really large trigger can cause the person to do well really to find a permanent solution to a temporary problem. I had a wonderful dentist here for about 40 years. His Christian name was Roman. I'm not going to mention his surname. Very good looking guy, really nice. His mother had been in Auschwitz and she came out of Auschwitz and she produced Roman and his sister and she led a perfectly normal and happy life. And then the sister 
lost her life in a car crash. And Roman said to me, that was one blow too many for his mother. And she achieved a permanent solution to what would hopefully have been a temporary problem. I would appeal to anybody who has any knowledge of anybody who's feeling so inclined to recommend that they get in touch with organizations such as Silence of the S Word or the Samaritans. Uh, the Samaritans listen. Silence of S word. They not only listen, they interact. Because it was founded in part by Mike Mansfield, the famous advocate, and his wife Yvette, because his daughter lost her life via that means. And whatever will help. But the problem is, of course, that sometimes these things are momentary and it's i don't want to believe at the point but i just thought i would mention that we do need to be aware of the fact that sometimes people need help to continue to live because sometimes, with the best will in the world, no matter how strong you are or how able you are and how gifted you are in terms of life's blessings, the darkness can be pretty overpowering. So without further ado, I will now plunge into less momentous matters. Joyce Phillips says, have you any info about Queen Camilla not making any more public engagements? Well, you know, she is 76, long past the age of retirement. And she has been undertaking an awful lot of engagements covering for the king as well as doing what she was ordinarily going to be doing and she's simply taking a break it's as simple as that she's always taking breaks on her own actually you know she is quite an independent woman and she is also an older woman and you know, she is not what you would call strong. I mean, not that she's weak, but, you know, she's not exactly a weightlifter type of person. And she needs a break and she's taking a break. And I think good luck to her. It's as simple as that. She needs a break and she's taking a break. And I hope nobody begrudges her taking a break because really she is at an age where most people have ceased working. So Swing Band Heaven says, <laughs> I love some of these names. Lady C, what is your take on all these stories about the Markles planning to come back to the UK to live? It seems that in the papers today, every other story is about this. Is it all just speculation and her PR machine going into overdrive or could there be any truth in this? Heaven forbid. Surely she must realize that if she came back to the UK, she would be likely to be booed everywhere she went. We know how thin skinned she can be. Well, we know how thin skinned she asserts that she is but we i also know how thick skin she is 
how she has a hide of tungsten, as the king pointed out. When it suits her, her vulnerability is a cloak that she puts on and takes off as it suits her purpose. The stories are utter rubbish. There's no way she and he are contemplating returning to the United Kingdom. She will never return to the United Kingdom unless she has absolutely no choice. She understands if she returns to the United Kingdom to live, the children remain in the United Kingdom should the marriage come to an end. And I know they would like everybody to believe that they are Romeo and Juliet, Abelard and Eloise, Mutt and Jeff, Armpit and deodorant, Batty and Bench. But Megan has a history of extremely volatile relationships with men. That's right. Extremely volatile relationships with men. She's a drama queen when she's married to a drama princess except he's a prince. So you have the drama queen and the drama prince who really is like a drama queen as well. And you can imagine the volatility. However, she's not stupid. She made the move dexterously to California. She's not coming back here, but if it will keep her in the news, she will say she's going to Timbuktu. Preferably, legs tightly clamped around Elon Musk's neck as she sits on his shoulder and they are both catapulted into space together. Megan and her billionaire. Oh, such a loving wife. Oh. She's so loving. Mm. Pity Harry won't be able to have enough self-generating fuel to fly her to Mars. I don't think Ellen will be doing it either. I gather he's he was ambered out and he doesn't intend to be markled in. <laughs> Naughty moi. Predictive text says, Lady C, I have asked questions a few times but never get chosen. Hopefully this one will. Predictive test, prediction, found out to be accurate. <laughs> the Washington Post has reported that there isn't enough evidence to pursue a case regarding Harry and Meghan's made-up cast chase in New York City. Hasn't Harry cited this incident in his legal argument for security? Security, isn't this, if this is a proven lie, does this mean Harry could be accused of perjury? Are we finally going to see him have consequences for telling lies. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Consequences will come when pigs fly. Thank you for all the time and effort you put into your videos. My pleasure. It's nice to be appreciated. Um. I'm sure the Washington Post is absolutely accurate in its report that there isn't enough evidence to pursue a case 
in the United States, but there is certainly enough evidence to pursue a case in the United Kingdom. Because if, as would appear to be the case, that is not an original letter that was advanced to the court as if it were an original letter. He couldn't be done for perjury, and he wouldn't be done for perjury, but if the document had been in any way altered or amended or enhanced or consolidated, it becomes a forgery and it is a criminal offence to utter a forgery. This, of course, is all speculation, and I need to say this for legal reasons. But there are so many errors in that document, so many anomalies, that naturally suspicions are triggered that something isn't quite right. And if everything were right, there wouldn't need to be the questions asked. But will he be done for anything? Of course, he's not going to be done for anything. Unless some dedicated member of the public should wish to mount a private prosecution, which they could, that's a way forward. Otherwise, I see no court in this country, or quite frankly in the United States of America either, doing anything about it. You know, the price of extreme privilege is you get to pretty much foul in your own nest and in everybody else's nest and you trip from nest to nest fouling 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 and are there actual enormous consequences that there would be in with lesser individuals I don't think so. I may sound cynical, I may be cynical, but I'm also realistic. However, if somebody wished to spend the money to nail down the facts and then act upon them in a private prosecution, that is something that could not be stopped easily. Jack Keel says, the best part is none of their setup car chase, which has cost them whatever modicum of credibility they had left. I didn't realize they had any, but thanks for the observation is relevant to Ravek's decision. All that effort, egg on their face and lies for nothing. That's what happens when you have a couple of hapless bullies attempting to run their own coop. A lot of madness for a whole lot of nothing. Mm. Yes, that letter was submitted so that the court would be influenced into thinking, oh, poor H. His mummy died in a car crash and he's going to die in a car crash too. We've got to give him all the security he needs. 
because as he said he's in bigger danger than money because he's married to a woman of color and there's racism and extremism and all sorts of isms that come into play. <laughs> the judge thought, not a chance, sweetie pie. I'm not budging. I can see clearly, well, what you're up to. And he wasn't influenced in the slightest. So it was all for nothing. But yet again, Harry has taken out a huge nail and hammered it into his own coffin. Oh dear, that reputation, mm, it really is in danger of being buried. Pauline Ross says, apparently in the letter, the English spelling of behavior was used instead of the American way of the spelling. Surely this is of some consequence. Pauline Ross, thanks for making that point. Other people have made other points. The sender of the letter has the wrong rank. On and on and on we can go, but I'm not going to because I covered this to a large extent the other day. But interesting, isn't it? It begs the question, who formulated the letter in the version that it was submitted to the court? Was it submitted as a transcription? Clearly not. Was it submitted as an original document? Appears to be the case. Why are Americans getting the rank of their NYPD officer wrong and even spelling behavior? in the English way. I smell something foul, do you? Kim Smith says, Megan and Harry do not have this type of power to fake an, an NYPD letter and not be arrested. I have said it for years. Powerful anti-monarchists, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> hired Meghan and have compromised Harry for the purpose of destroying support for the royal family. Death by a thousand hits. Does anyone really believe Harry and Meghan are intelligent enough to have planned these constant attacks. Someone powerful is behind them. Well, that's a very interesting hypothesis and many people would agree with you. I just happen to think that Meghan has a very fruitful imagination and Harry is a very receptive individual to good ideas. Harry and Meghan both think they are far cleverer than they are. I think we empower them if we think that they are agents of greater powers. And I think that makes them more potent. And I don't think that that actually is the case. It could well be, but I do not see it as being the case. They are too muddled, they are too messy, they are too puerile, they are too juvenile, they are too inconsistent. If they were 
being handled by really intelligent forces who had an ominous stance where the monarchy is concerned, they would be far more consistent, they would be far more under the radar as opposed to way above the radar. Look at me, look at me, look, 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 I'm in the newspapers again today. The hysteria, the wild inconsistency, I'm, I think had they been agents who were being handled, they would be far more subtle and clever and not as obvious as they are. So, and I think some people say they're damaging the reputation of the royal family. I think they are not only damaging it where some people are concerned, but I think where a far larger percentage of people are concerned, they have shone a light on the good works that the rest of the royal family does. And they have, by being the foils that they are, they have highlighted in a way that would otherwise have not been highlighted the sterling work that the rest of the royal family does. You know, apathy is the death of interest, not drama and sensationalism. And if the royal family were too dull, and some of them are very worthy and not the most exciting. But if you didn't have the drama that's going on with Harry and Meghan, I think an awful lot of the activities of the rest of the royal family wouldn't even be touched upon in terms of the general news media. Just my take. Just a name says, just a point. I reread Harry and Meghan's car chase recollection and they claim that they stopped at several police stations allegedly. That in itself reflects poorly on the NYPD. Why didn't any of the police assist given they were in such danger? Well, I honestly don't remember now whether it were they stopped at one police station or several police stations. But if I recall correctly, they were, they followed a pol one or two police cars for a short while and then the police cars veered off. So they were clearly not in danger. And not only were they clearly not in danger where the police were concerned, but the mayor, Eric Adams, got up and said, right after the incident that effectively as Harry and Meghan had described it, it hadn't taken place. And there's also the taxi driver that they, that the, the car that they got into, the taxi driver said afterwards, there was no catastrophic car chase and that Harry and Meghan had effectively made the whole thing up. So, I think there's plenty of evidence, aside from common good sense, as well as ordinary everyday reason, that it's not possible to have a catastrophic car chase for two hours at 80 miles an hour in New York City. So, Oh, and just a name also continued with. Prince Harry has demanded answers about who was behind the downgrading of his UK police protection. Recent court documents have outlined the Prince's request to uncover this person's name. Why? What will he do? Undermine this person's capabilities? 
I consider that threatening in my opinion, do you? Well, of course it's threatening. He wanted to know the name of the person so he could obviously complain about them and hopefully get them fired the way he got, or, and she got, Piers Morgan, Sharon Osborne, and who else did they get for Oh, Dan Wooten. Yeah. Dan actually hasn't been fired, but he was stood down. So I need to be careful how I put this. But why, why did he want the person's name? It's as obvious as the nose on your face or mine. Very threatening behaviour. Harry is a bully. He shows in this one action, as well as in other actions, that he is a bully. And of course, let's remember the complaints against Meghan at the palace about bullying were not exclusive to her. They included Harry as well. He doesn't seem to understand that his actions link up with other accusations made against him and her. If ever there was a couple who in their every word and deed manage at every turn to damage their own reputations as a result of their inconsistent, contradictory and undesirable behaviour, it's Meghan and Harry. Anne Wartenberg says, Dear Lady C, am I correct in thinking that Commander Timothy Lawrence comes from a family that was originally Jewish, having changed their name quite a while back from Levine or Levy? Thank you. Well, I wrote this in which book I don't remember now, that the family name was originally Levy and it was changed to Lawrence. He's from a Jewish background. As I told you, lots of Jewishness proliferates in the British upper classes, whether royal, aristocratic, or gentry. Less in the gentry, actually. Less in the gentry, but more in the aristocracy and the royal families. And you know, they also think that Prince Albert's father was the Jewish piano teacher. I threw that in for good measure. My view says, Dear Lady C, in historian Margaret Macmillan's book, Paris 1919, she describes Mrs. Woodrow Wilson as a Southern woman who, quote unquote, did not want to spoil her maid by taking her to London, she told a fellow American, because the British treated blacks too well, end of quotes. This belies Meghan's stance that it was only until she came to the UK that her being black was pointed out as a racial slur. I believe she was more embarrassed that her secret got out and then found it useful to make a drama out of it as the whole UK was against her to gain pity. What do you think, please? Well, Mrs. Woodrow Wilson was absolutely right. Blacks in the United Kingdom have always been treated better than blacks in the United States were until relatively recently. In Britain, there was no such thing as slavery. Slavery was not a law. You know, there is a big fuss about various of our national uh, tunes, that, such as Land of Hope and Glory. Uh, you know, and which alludes to the fact that after the Vikings had enslaved some of the British, 
that, and they got rid of the Vikings, that Brit Britons would never be slaves again. And ever since then, slavery has not been ever a legal institution in this country. Now, I'm not saying that there have not been problems in the past, but I am saying that Britain treated its black population far more progressively and gently than the Americans. Hence why Mrs. Rodeau Wilson made the statement that she did. As for Megan, she passed for white for most of her life. She didn't mind playing the color card as and when it suited her that she had a little bit of something. But as she pointed out in the Netflix series, she took strong exception to being called black. And that wasn't a recent thing, because as I have pointed out before, that whole nonsense about the box that she created, had her father suggested she create her own box at school, you know, every other child of colour in that school would have ticked the appropriate box, but Megan didn't want to tick the box that would have deprived her of the opportunity of being white or passing for white. Megan took strong exception to the British press for calling her black. It shows that Meghan has a huge problem over her identity as a woman of color and that she basically despises being regarded as black by anyone. That tells you she has prejudice against black people. Otherwise, she wouldn't mind being called black because she's clearly not black skinned. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> so what she didn't want was to be categorized with a group of people that she clearly has to look down upon Otherwise, she would have no objection to being included in their number. Photo by Sal says, <laughs> Lady C, hello from Melbourne. Hello. Please explain how, if the Markles didn't bring the kids over for fear of security, how on earth does that photo of them all seemingly at Frogmore exist. It must have been faked. Also, did Harry not claim that her, Maj her late Majesty the Queen hugged her dear great-grandchildren, meaning that they must have met in the UK at some point? Have they visited or not? I say not. I say that photo is fake and that Harry lied. I say there are anomalies. I say that there, yet again, Harry and Meghan show that it's not possible for them to play cricket with a straight bat. One day it's black, the next day it's white, the next day it's blue, the next day it's green, the next day it's pink. They are like egg beaters in everybody's brain. However, my understanding from the palace itself is that the late queen met Lilibet 
refused to allow Harry to have his photographer take a photograph of them. Oh, Granny, you know, would, wouldn't it be wonderful? Oh, the two lilibets. <laughs> I don't think so, Harry. <laughs> sort of thing. But Granny, Harry, darling, you know. I do have to run. It's been so nice, a sweet little thing. Sort of thing. But my understanding is that they did meet. So, saying that he can't bring the children over here to have them in a royal residence and in royal environments is ludicrous because they would be protected. Harry and Meghan are trying to force the issue to get around the clock 24-7 protection. They want the restoration of their IPP status. That's what they want. They want to be internationally protected people. Everything else is smoke and mirrors. Typical of them. Susan MacDonald says, when Prince Andrew and Sarah came over on their, I believe, first trip to Canada, they were assigned a military doctor who is a friend of one of my sisters. She got on very well with them and became their doctor for other visits and would be invited to social occasions. On one occasion, they were all in a hot tub. This was the 80s when they were really popular. Someone got a picture of her and Andrew that looked like they were alone together and printed all of this stuff about Prince Andrew frolicking with a sexy Canadian doctor, etc. Well, he was furious and went up one side of the press and down the other. That could have ended her career and he defended her. I will always be fond of him and have gratitude for that. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. I have met Andrew and I found him charmless. But I know people who know him well. He has a very mixed reputation, deservedly. But he was a genuine war hero. He has been a good ex-husband to Sarah. He has been a good father to his, his daughters. He was a good son to both his parents. He has been a good sibling to all his siblings. He's not perfect but he does have his virtues. And I will have to say that if you, if every 40 year old who availed himself of the services of an above the age of consent, teenage professional, There would be an awful lot of people who were condemned because most men who avail themselves of the services of professionals do so with the understanding that there is, it's a business transaction. Now, he quite possibly didn't realize it was a business transaction because we only have her word for it, that she told her employer that she had scored and that he gave her $15,000 for that information. Andrew was good-looking when he was young. 
when he was 40, he was still a very good looking man. I know people who have 15, 20 year age gaps between them, 25 year age gaps, and they have started out with relationships that ended in long and durable and happy marriages. My grandmother's brother's widow, her second husband was 25 years younger than she was. This was in the 1940s. And Pip and Edna were very, very happy. So, and she was the one who was 25 years older than he was. I just throw that all out for consideration because I will tell you, until very recently, the word of a professional woman who had sold herself and had admitted to having sold herself was not accepted in a court of law. That's a custom that changed relatively recently. But until fairly recently, a woman of that repute and a woman of that standing was not allowed to give evidence in a court of law. The theory being if she could sell herself for money, she could sell anybody else down the river as well. And on that note, I will say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has, may I ask you to continue to send in the questions and the comments so I will know what you would like us to be speaking about. Okay, thank you so much. God bless and goodbye. And if you have truly enjoyed this, would you please like and evidently liking is important i keep on forgetting why like share subscribe press the notification bell and take good care bye bye